guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today i will be showing you a little bit of the process for the video that i did for patreon for february i really liked how this one went so i'm excited to show you guys on youtube too but if you want to see the full video for this one including the full sketching walkthrough i have it on my patreon and the link will be in the description after doing two gouache videos back to back, I was really excited to get back into watercolors again and especially since I really loved my first try with the Daniel Smith watercolors, I was just really eager to use them again. We did this for Patreon and I had a very clear idea of where I wanted to go with this piece. I think that in comparison to my other videos and especially my gouache videos, I like to keep my watercolor videos more laid back and less complicated. The color palette I would describe as being very limited. The skin tones especially is just a mixture of paints gray, my reds and new gamboge which is just a very warm yellow but mostly I used a lot of paints gray for this and you can see in this when it's starting out it's a lot of the paints gray and the, and the reds and ideally I would avoid just those two colors for the skin tones I would usually have a warm color to offset those very cool colors together but for this I opted to separate the warm colors for different parts of the face instead of mixing them together in the palette i just made sure that they were sitting next to each other on the painting and it's not something that i'm used to doing but i really liked the effect this time i think i ended up with a very different painting than what i had in my head before i started just in the execution much more than the colors i used so what I had in my head is that I wanted her face and how I painted it to be very open with a lot of just the paper showing through and I didn't want to blend out too much with my water which is something that I'm very guilty of. There really isn't anything wrong with it but it's just that even when I set myself up to draw a piece that is raw or like with more in the looks of what traditional watercolors look like, especially portraits, I really like the kinds of portraits that Paulina Bright does and especially Jane Betta, who's one of my favorite artists. I had just gotten back into Facebook and I've been seeing a lot of Paulina's videos on there and I really just wanted a piece that would remind me of her portraits but I just find it really hard to naturally get that kind of look. She leaves out a lot of her edges without blending them too much and I really really like that raw look to watercolors but when it comes to my process I just find myself almost instinctively blending out the edges which is um, unfortunate in this one because that's not the kind of look that I was going for. In this piece I ended up with something that still looks like my own <laughs> which is not bad it's just um not what i had intended when i started what i didn't plan at all was the color palette even though i had this look that i wanted before i started i my exact colors were actually decided on the spot so i think that's why this painting at least the colors is very reminiscent of a lot of my older watercolor paintings. There's purples coming out because of the blues in the paints gray and the reds mixing together and I also just really like the pops of yellow that I can see sometimes so it's not that bad. Um, the color is actually one of the things that that make me like this piece so much. 
I think too because I was just watching so many of Paulina Bright's videos that I, uh, maybe towards in the middle of this piece, I was more restrained in how many layers I would put on and the layers that I do put on, I would be more careful with them. So I was really happy about that, especially in the ears, which is something that I always, always get wrong and then that I always mess up just because of I don't pay that much attention to them or just because sometimes I overdo it with the layers. I'm really happy with how the ear turned out <laughs> for this one. It sounds like a very minor thing about the piece, but it's a big accomplishment for me. And just in general with the piece, um, what I in exercised the most was just restraint and keeping my layers just in what was necessary. I didn't want to overdo it. And that's one thing that I see in in people's paintings when they recreate mine is that I feel like uh, it gets muddy because of how I overdo the layers in my painting. So when someone else does it, it's not always the same consistency in the paint. So sometimes it's not going to be the same look that they end up with. So I really wanted to keep the layers on this to the minimum and just in how much I would need to get the value so um, yeah I was really happy about how how much I held back with this and that I was more thinking about being careful with the layers rather than how much I could put on top of each other so because of how many reds and cooler undertones I could see in the piece I thought that I would keep it towards what was in the reference photo and paint a whole dark green background the green background too really helped in shaping her profile more just because before that I wasn't really being careful of the my paint going out of my line so um, it, it was really needed to have this dark background to go over where I painted out of my lines but yeah this color for the background is really just a mixture of my deep sap green and the paints gray that I used for her skin tone so much. I think in the second layer, in for the second and final layer in the background, I would I added in a little bit of violet, which really just helped in separating the background from um, the edges of the background from most of like the halo that is around her. So yeah, the background is just very simple. It's a couple of layers of mostly the same colors. What really inspired me to go to for this very dark background on top of this light skin tones in the painting was Jane Betta, who's also one of my favorite watercolor artists. And on that topic, I was really sad to see that she decided to take a break from YouTube. Um, it was heartbreaking to me because I didn't expect it and it's been so long and that I had no idea. I think a couple of months ago I was feeling the same kind of burnout she was and so I actually took a break from watching videos and that's what made me miss her announcement when she did make it so it was really sad. I think that YouTube in general is very harsh towards artists. I would say that it's within the art community in itself. We're mostly very supportive of each other. That's one thing that I really love about the art community on YouTube. But the thing is, it's we are not that big, I would say, just in this niche of watercolor and gouache videos. I don't think we're really that big. And so as much as I really love this community, I also think that it's very hard to grow as a creator on YouTube doing the same kinds of videos we do. So she's now focusing most of her energy into her community that really gives her feedback and which is something that a lot of artists want in their work is to, well, is to know what other people think about them and to just have this conversation around art, which is a very weird topic and it's very different from what I started with, but it really got me thinking about how much time I put into YouTube. Jane is now spending her time and energy on her other projects that support her, 
like not just morally but also financially so it really got me thinking about how much i'm really depending on youtube so i still earn most of my income from youtube i earn a little bit on patreon and a little bit of my affiliates on domestica which is really the only thing that i really promote because i do really like domestica and all that but i'm thinking about how much of my energy is just on youtube and it's kind of scary that someone i admire so much and someone that i look up to so much would choose to spend their energy somewhere else i don't know it's just scary to think about but yeah for now most of my energy is on youtube and on patreon i'm also working on a workshop right now but after that i'm planning on building courses for myself and basically just making them available on patreon just so i could build a bigger community than i have right now instead of just focusing all of my time and energy on youtube which as much as i'm grateful for youtube it's not always dependable or sustainable just because there are months on youtube where i would earn half as much as has half as much as i do on other months even when i'm pumping out the same amount of videos that I normally do so yeah it's good I think to spend time and energy on other things too I don't see myself abandoning YouTube at all just because I really enjoy I really enjoy it I really enjoy meeting new people on here and I enjoy sharing my art to you guys but I also just want to maybe spread out my time amongst other projects too I am very slowly starting to think about having other people edit my videos but that would be an even longer process just so I can have the same amount of creative like look that I try to put on my videos and have other people to get the same kind of look um it's it's a whole process but yeah I want to eventually do more things on here <laughs> it's really not that serious for me it's just I was just really I was just really shocked um, when I went to Jane's channel and, and saw her last video and it got me thinking about a lot of things and that's why I'm talking so much about many things. It's really not the point of this painting process at all. But yeah, I'm going back to this piece. I guess the only thing that I'm not happy about um, in hindsight, I guess I've already done the video a while ago and i'm just doing the voiceover now but one thing i'm really not happy about is just that very singular look to her hair while i had it in my head that it was that it was going to be very dark and very i guess very stiff is the kind of look that i was going for so in my head it was almost black and so it didn't really matter as much the kind of undertones i would have under it but because i'm using paints gray and it's not really as dark as i wanted and it's already hard enough to get a pure black with watercolors anyway it's still not as dark as i wanted and so it would have worked well if i had warmer colors underneath that would shine through in the highlights and so i added that in later but yeah that's one of the only things that i really didn't like about the look of this piece i did add that in later but you won't be seeing that much in the video and it doesn't look as good as if i had just had those warmer colors under the very dark ones for her hair I really enjoyed doing, adding more and more shadows to her back and just her neck like that because it didn't feel like it was unnecessary 
every time I would add more layers to it, it just felt like it was adding to the colors and the values. I wasn't just doing whatever just because I felt like it. Um, it felt like the layers that I was putting on were vital to getting the values that I wanted and so it was just really nice and actually a very comfortable process from beginning to end. I can't believe I didn't think about her freckles at all which is such a big part of the photo. I only thought about it towards the end of the piece which is where it should be anyway but um, I almost didn't put them at all but I'm so glad that I went back to the to the reference photo before I really ended the piece and so I had the time to add them on there. I wish that I did her freckles on her shoulder more in the same way that I did the ones on her nose but I still really like it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video too. Thank you for watching it all and once again if you want to see the full process and walkthrough it's up on my Patreon. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me and I will be seeing you guys again soon.